Feminism, now what? Today, what we're gonna talk about poop. Yes, poop. Poop actually can reveal a lot of things. Now, let me kind of give you some background as to why we're gonna talk about poop today, and I'm gonna try and make this, I'm gonna try not to go over the uh, parameter I set for myself on, on recording these. Um, back in 2022, I think on, on previous videos, I've shared that uh, my grand nephew, who is now five years old, moved in with me in April of 2020, right after COVID like took off. And he was 17 months at the time. And, and this kid came and he was living with me and we eventually discovered that uh, he had a real aversion to anything brightly colored, any foods brightly colored. Didn't matter what it was. If it was brightly colored, it was not going in his mouth. And so Jackson would eat a lot of bland looking, pale yellow, pale brown foods. Those were like his favorites, French toast sticks, um, Oh, man, I can't even think of everything that we used to give that kid. He just loved. And he was hungry all the time. He was always in the kitchen. Well, foolish me thought, oh, this kid is growing, you know, and I'm glad he's eating. I, and it never even dawned on me that there was uh, an underlying issue to all of that. I was just happy he was eating pasta, rice, uh, what else? Chicken nuggets. French fries, I uh, love sweets, you know, cakes and, and uh, special granola bars and things like that. I mean, he, he was eating all of that. He was drinking protein drinks, uh, his little protein drinks and Pediasure drinks. He loved those. They were like milkshakes to him. And, but <laughs> we started having problems and I never tied the problems to the food or to his gut. And uh, one day I had a friend of mine over that I've known for quite a while now who has a child who has autism. And uh, when Jackson was diagnosed with autism, we it was like, okay, now it makes sense to me as to why he has such an aversion to brightly colored foods and why he only wants these and why when touching certain foods, he was just, he would freak out because of the sensory component and, and all of this was, was new to me, but it was all starting to make sense. Well, one day this friend was over and she saw Jackson doing this, scratching his behind and she's like, he has yeast belly. And I go, what? Yeast belly? What are you talking about? And she goes, he has yeast belly. You, I bet you he's got yeast belly. And I'm like, she goes, think about what you're, what you're feeding him. Think about the fact that this child was in the hospital or uh, at one point uh, in his young life. He was on multiple antibiotics for the first 18 months of his life. Multiple infections, antibiotics galore. Um, she said, I think you need to do gut testing. Test his stool. Test his stool? Like, really? She goes, test the stool. We did it for our kid. I bet he's got yeast belly. Okay. Now, she comes from experience having been down this road. Why should I, why should I dismiss it? So I did. She said, here's the doctor you go to. This is what you want done. Tell him what's happening. So I did. And back then, Jackson had very loose stools all the time, which I attributed to, well, he's drinking all these, these protein drinks that are like shakes. That's why his stool is running. Oh no, 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 no. Well, we got the stool tested, which involves getting a sample of their stool without urine, which for a little boy in diapers is hard to do, but it can be done because you're going to place the plastic urine collection kit over the penis and then you are going to collect the stool without the urine put it in these special vials and then it gets 
FedExed to the lab and then the lab sends the test back in two weeks, the doctor reads it. And that's exact, that's what we did. It took me almost three weeks to get a clean stool sample. We, we sent it in and sure enough, it comes back. Jackson has major yeast, C. diff, and three other bacteria in his gut. Whole new food protocol, supplements, everything because we have to kill the yeast, kill the C. diff, and kill the three bacteria. This is why the kid was in the kitchen all the time, hungry all the time. This is why by afternoon, he was self-injury so bad, just constant like this, biting himself, ramming his head on the table, ramming his head into walls, ramming his head on tile floors. Didn't even phase him when he did that. Ramming his head into doors. If you said the slightest little word to him in the afternoon, he would go berserko. And I'm like, what is the deal? His gut was a mess. And he was always sick. His immune system was residing in a gut of disrepair. And we didn't know it. I had no idea until the stool test came back and revealed all of this. Now, you go, whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then how do you, like, what do you do from there? So it's change all the food he was eating, get rid of all of that food that he was eating. No more French toast sticks, no more sugar, no more gluten, no more dairy. Uh, go gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, no fruit for the first 28 days. Follow this protocol, and if you can get through it and do it, you will have great success. Go on special supplements that help poke holes in the yeast and kill it off and clean his gut out. Now, at the time that Jackson, that this was discovered, Jackson was saying less than 20 words and he was three years old. He, he should have had, but da, 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 and he didn't. 40 days into this new food regimen and supplements, Jackson started saying more words. He started saying more words. The first time he said, I love you, we, we cried. We haven't ever heard that. And then he, he said it, I love you. He, he said it. The self-injury behavior dropped dramatically. The, the fits of rage in the afternoon disappeared. The sedative, the runny stools, gone. It was the sedative that was causing the runny stools. As best we could tell, that's what it was because we at the six month mark, we had them retested. We went from many yeast to rare yeast. We went from C. diff to no C. diff. We still had a few bacteria, but the doctor said everybody has bacteria in their gut. You're not gonna get rid of all of the bacteria in the gut. We still had some, but what the biggest things that came out of that was we healed his gut. He talked more and the self-injury behavior went down. Those are three major accomplishments. And you know what? It's been two years since we implemented those food changes and we haven't gone back. We're still gluten-free, we still try and stay dairy-free, and we still try and, try and stay sugar-free as much as possible. I accidentally gave him gluten last year in the form of chicken nuggets. We use a, a brand from uh, Sprouts or Whole Foods. You can get them in, in your grocery store too. I misread the pack and missed the gluten-free label and I bought the regular ones and we started seeing regression. He can't have, we've determined he can't have gluten. The other big thing, this was another big thing. Jackson used to have eczema bad. He used to get these rashes and we would put on prescription cream and we would try all these different oils and different things on him. Cut out the gluten, the rashes, gone. I haven't had
had to put those creams on him. Oh, I think it's been over a year. So I share this with people because this is not something that's well known. I hadn't heard of it until my friend shared it with me. Her son also had major yeast belly. Her son also struggling to, to speak and they had uh, similar outcomes. Now, is this gonna work for every child? I don't know that it does. Can't say that it does, but you won't know till you try uh, to see if maybe there's something that your child is taking in that is preventing them uh, from progressing. That, Because here's the thing that I think about is Jackson could not communicate to us that his tummy hurt. And I think by afternoon, filling it with food, by the afternoon, he was so uncomfortable and he, he couldn't tell us. My stomach hurts. Children that couldn't communicate, I just wonder if their bellies hurt and because they don't know and they can't communicate with their parent or their caretaker that their belly hurts, they just eventually become well, this is just what it is and I'm supposed to feel this way and there, nope, and I can't tell anybody that it hurts and then I'm bothered by it. Um, children who can't speak. Is a belly full of yeast keeping them from talking? There's a gut-brain connection. I, be I believe it. It's not a well-studied thing in the medical community. You mention it to, to regular doctors and they're like, what? And I'm like, I know how I feel when I don't eat the proper foods and how much it gives me brain fog and affects my thinking and everything. Would you not think it's the same thing in children? But they haven't studied that. And so if I hadn't known somebody who had the same experience, the same positive experience, and, and she actually knows, I believe, of another child. I know our therapist knows of another child who had the same uh, similar experience. I, I would have been like, oh, really? <laughs> really? You, you tried that? That worked, huh? No, it worked. And so I've just been trying to get the word out to people. It's not easy. It's not cheap. But let me tell you something. It is worth it. It is worth every dime you spend to get this done, to try it, to stay with it. Longer than five days, you, you've got to go the whole 28 days plus to see the outcome, to hear your child talk, to see less self-injury behavior, to see less rashes, to see them be able to, to be able to communicate with you and, tell you, and to see that, them be happy and to see that they're not in pain, um, to see the stool changes, it's worth it. It's worth it. The stool testing, I think at the time, cost me $325 per test, but it was worth it. It, it was worth it uh, to be able to know that he's not suffering in the gut. And here's the, here's the other thing, that when you fixed the gut, like we fixed the gut, his IgA number, which was the indicator of his immune system residing in a gut of disrepair, that number went up to where his immune system is in better shape now, to where he's not sick all the time. That was another benefit <laughs> that I was like, yay! If I hadn't got the stool tested, I would know none of that. If my friend hadn't come over and saw Jackson do this, she's like, you don't itch the back of your butt unless you have yeast. How many of us are, are, are itching or scratching underneath because, well, do we have yeast? Um, it's something to consider. So I, I try and tell people, and I see people all the time with nonverbal children, and I want to say to them, try the stool testing. Get it tested. It might not be your child's thing as to why they're not talking. It might not be it. It might be heavy metals. It might be mold toxicity. It might be something else. But if it is then you know and you can do something about it. But until you test for it, you're not going to be able to rule it out. And like I said, it might not help every child be able to speak, but Jackson still 
He's not a fluent speaker. He's not saying, you know, sentences and communicating like we are. But I, I've, he, <laughs> I can understand him. He's to a point where he can tell me he wants something. He understands what I'm saying, and he can tell me, I want. He can even say his prayers. He couldn't do that in 2022. And today, he can say the blessing, and he can say his little prayers at night. Dear Lord, thank you. Look, Moody, thank you, KK. Thank you, Annette. Thank you, Cole. In Jesus' name, amen. It's something to consider. So I share that with you today because someone shared it with me. A functional pediatrician is who did our testing and I know that not everybody can get into a functional pediatrician and functional pediatricians are not covered by insurance, which stinks. There are some online uh, functional doctors uh, that are on Facebook. Uh, one of them, I think, is uh, Biomedical, uh, Greer McGinnis, who uh, can order some testing uh, for you and then interpret the results for you uh, so that you can try that and see. If, if for nothing else you've eliminated, if, if it comes back and it says, no, there's nothing wrong with the gut, then you've eliminated that as a possibility of, of why your child is, is not able to speak. Um, but in our case, that was a huge factor for us in the speaking, like I said, the speaking, the self-injury behavior, the runny stools. He's not in the kitchen wanting to eat all day long anymore. That's gone because you kill the yeast. The yeast are always hungry. They always want something to eat, you know, and when you're feeding them sugar and all the junk food, yeah, I see parents all the time and I know, I know, I know, I understand, but it's like, oh, my heart hurts when I see parents post and saying, my kid will only eat French fries and a chocolate shake and chicken nuggets and that's all he's gonna do. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, that poor kid's gut. I wonder if it's full of yeast um, or they'll only do certain things or they're in the kitchen all the time. But listen, the struggle is real. I'm not discounting that at all. Been there, done that. The struggle is real. But it's like something we ought to consider. And I share this with you because you can go to behavioral pediatricians and other pediatricians and they're not going to say anything to you about this because they didn't study it. A functional pediatrician who's looking at the, all, all the processes is going to say, you need to look at the gut. Let's test the stool. Uh, we tested his urine. We found out some of his levels in the urine were off the chain and others were in the gutter. Now we're trying to make it more, more level. Uh, so there's urine testing too to look for things. There's all kinds of stuff you can test for uh, to see, you know, our environment, our food environment. That's a whole nother topic, y'all. <laughs> That's a whole nother topic that I won't get into right now, but someday I will share my thoughts about the whole food industry thing because I'm just not finding a lot of positivity about it. So anyway, well, I'll let you go. I want to bring that up to you, share that with you because it's so important. It's so important. Give you something to think about, research it, check it out. Like I said, you have to make your own decision for your child and what's best. So I'm not sure, I'm not telling you what to do, where to go, how to do it. I'm just saying, this was our experience. This is what we found and I'm, and I'm telling people what we found, but you gotta do it yourself. You gotta do your research. You gotta find the doctor and whatever the doctor suggests. You know, uh, in our case, we use a functional pediatrician for all of his appointments, even his well visits and um, physicals. So, uh, anyway, well, I'll let you go. You have a great day. Bye.